I saw like six or seven different incorrect like names for it. Um, I saw all sorts of stuff. It was kind of funny, but I was like, I told them right then what it was and still got like weird looks. So like, dude, I've been working this for years. I got to just make this up in this two and a half minute fight. So joining the show today is undefeated Bellator featherweight Lucas Brennan, fresh off his victory at Bellator 282. And uh, how's everything going today, man? Uh, doing good, man. Having a, having a great day, man. Out of camp. <laughs> good, good, man. It's great to hear. So I want to talk about that, right? Off that victory that you just had. Um, you fought Johnny Soto, right? It was a fairly quick work for you. What did you make of the fight and your performance in that one? Um, I mean, I mean, right, there was only so much of it. But, uh, I mean, it, it was good. It, it was, was a exactly quick one, yeah. How, it, was, it, it went exactly how it needed to. You know, I... Um, He's he's very good, and I, and I watch his other fights, you know, and he he kind of wrestles everyone uh, to death, and so um, and throws bombs, you know. I, I you know there's no need to take part in any of that, you know. As uh, and wrestling went about how I expected it would, you know, I, I had to get more takedowns than I needed to, but it, it worked out. And uh, obviously, once I got his back, I was fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, looking from the outside, it was it was pretty uh, pretty chill. I didn't even get hit once, so I'm I'm, I'm feeling good about it. Yeah, you spoke about him as a guy who he does use wrestling a lot. Was it nice to be able to get the better of a guy who relies on wrestling like that? Yeah, in, for in sure. In the wrestling department, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had a lot of um, speculation on, on how he planned on using it. Because, you know, like his last two fights, uh, he fought Weber Almeida and uh, Adil Benjelani, who, who I thought he beat. But he wrestled a ton in those fights. And I didn't know if he would decide to go about the same game plan and still try and take me down. I figured he'd use it. He'd use that wrestling skill defensively um, just to try and stay on the feet and throw. Because while I don't think his striking's great, he uses a lot of power in it. You know, he throws a lot of big bombs. He led all his fights with, like, head kicks and overhands. So it's like, obviously, he'll, he'll come out the gate a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to be able to wrestle the wrestler a little bit. And uh, and and already, as soon as I got a hold of him, as soon as I had a body lock together, you know, I, I was like, all right, like, well, it might take a little bit more effort than I'd like, but but I'll uh, I'll get it. So, is it always a game plan for you to finish the fight on the ground, or is it something you just go about naturally? I mean, I mean, it is. Uh, I'm not gonna be upset if it, if it ends any other any other particular way. I just um, I know to fight towards what I what I'm better at. You know, I, I find no reason to test test anything out. You know, um, I love the guy, but same night I fought uh, Cody Law fought who has tremendous wrestling. He has, he has fantastic high-level wrestling. And he decided that the entire fight, he was going to test out his kickboxing and see how that went. And he lost, right? You know, he lost to a very tough guy who one of my friends has fought before. Um, and there's no point in doing that. You know, like, there's, there's no need to do that. I work, I work striking more than I work anything else. Like, I do more striking than I do jiu-jitsu and than I do wrestling. Um, but... That is a, if I need it, you know, you know, it is all a, a, a means to an end. You know? Yeah. And how do you feel physically coming out of that fight? Is anything, any nicks or anything? Of course it was a close one. I mean, it was a quick one rather, but is there anything in there? Uh, not really. My, my hand hurt for like five minutes after that was, that was really it. Just I, I, a little bit. Uh, I don't rap. So it was kind of like, all right, like hurt a little bit, but I was fine. And uh, everything that hurt on me, that hurts on me now hurt on me prior to the fight also it was all you know just like uh just nicks and stuff from camp and uh you know the training i had so it's yeah no i, I didn't really get anything out of that besides camp is burned so i'm, I'm good and uh, i think the reason i asked that is because you, you've been pretty active this year right you already fought twice in 2022 are you looking to remain active this year mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i i, I want to fight again uh ideally like november-ish time uh i try and i say i try to i covid kind of through wrenching things in my schedule, how I'd like to plan things for a little while. But uh, if I can do an every like four to five month sort of thing, it's perfect. It's, it's a, I fight, I get a month to a month and a half of training, but with not such an intensity that I'm dead all the time. And then hit a, hit a 12 week camp fight, go back into that again and just kind of keep doing that. That was the plan from the beginning. And that worked for like two fights. And then they started canceling things because of COVID. I had a guy fall out and then they canceled things of COVID. So I was out for like seven months. I fought immediately after fighting. I got COVID and was out for another like seven months because of how events were. And I was like, all right, like, so I'm, I'm kind of back on track with how I like things to be. Uh, yeah, ideally I'll get one more in before the end of the year. You said you got COVID? 
Uh, yeah. Um, what month are we in right now? A, a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was I that, what was that like? Did you get it? Uh, did you get it badly? So not all. So not terribly. I had just fought um, this guy from the East, uh, East Coast, Maskebiki, um, and it was immediately after me and my dad both got sick. I wasn't sick all that long. Like I, I felt, I felt tired. Like I just felt tired for a few days and kind of was fine. My dad got the worst of it. He still messed up. Uh, he was, uh, he had pneumonia. He had 40% lung damage, uh, was on oxygen oh. for a while. He was, uh, not doing great. Um, the only lasting effects I have, my conditioning was pretty shit for a little while. As soon as I was done with COVID, I was like, all right, I'll jump back into training all the time. And I jumped back in, I trained for four hours and thought I was going to die. Uh, I was not like, like my conditioning was just horrible after. And so it, it, uh, it took a little bit of time to get that built, built back up to normal. Um, and now it's fine. Like, I don't really have any, um, residual, um, effects from that. But, uh, yeah, my dad's still like, my dad can't fly because it, wow. it messed his blood. He drove to Connecticut for the fight and then drove back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like, while it, it didn't kill me all that much, uh, it definitely messed with how my how my training camp started and and uh, my coaching staff i guess yeah yeah that's no joke i wish your dad all the best man so what do you make of the division right speaking of fights what do you make of the featherweight division i mean lo looking at it it's it's easily within within bellator and really within mma it, it, it's wildly stacked like there's there's very very good guys top to bottom at 45 uh and I mean, even looking like, like, I know it's over now, but looking at the tournament in Bellator when it first started, like there was not, there was not a single guy that was like in there as filler. Like, like the, the lower end of guys in that entire thing was like Adam Borix. Like, like, like it was, it was stacked, stacked guys. Like it was, it was very, very, um, the whole division itself has a lot of talent in it. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that I'm, I'm happy to add to. And I think it's more stacked than most of the other weight classes, you know, if I'm being honest, not that there's not great guys everywhere, but um, like just the top 10 alone at 45 is huge. And then even if you're looking at guys that aren't ranked, but are like on the, on the cusp of getting there, you know, there's very good guys all around. Yeah. And I saw you talk after the fight that, you know, you're not looking to name any opponents or anything specific to you got like a deal done. Right. If I'm not mistaken. How, but I do want to ask, is there a matchup that excites you, like regardless of ranking or anything like that? Beef, is there someone that you look at and you're like, I want to fight that guy? It'd be a fun fight for the fans. Um, not, not, not incredibly, not on the roster currently, actually, if I'm being honest. There was a guy that was on the roster at one point who I wanted to fight, who they cut, uh, AJ Agazarm. Uh, if you know who that is, he's an ADCC uh, qualifier twice. Um, a uh, very good jiu-jitsu guy on paper and uh he would have been fun he's a douchebag from uh, the ds camp uh, but he would have he would have been a ton of fun and uh they end up cutting him because he just couldn't bring that high level jiu-jitsu into mma which was kind of upsetting but like no i i really don't have uh i don't focus too much on like particular guys i, I would like to fight or anything like that you know it, it's not um it's not something i worry myself with too much it's it's, it's not an issue and it's not something that needs to take up headspace you know i don't i don't want to spend however long it takes from where i am now to be knocking on ranking doors and whatnot you know which i'm in no rush to do but like, i don't need to be from now to then worried about guys x y and z and 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 whatever you know i i uh one fight at a time you know and i just kind of look at who they give me and, and what things are looking like then and uh i think most of the fights if i'm being honest would be exciting and i, and I would have a lot of fun with them but uh no i no, no particular names. I do feel the need to ask because I think it's get it asked quite, you know, a bit in your interviews and all that because you are an undefeated fighter and you look very good. You're very dominant uh, in the way you fight and all that. So, you know, I got to ask because I'm not saying when do you want to rank fight or anything, but do you feel right now where you stand that like you're at that level? I'm not saying you want to you gotta get a rank. I understand that it's one step at a time, but do you feel like you're on the level? I do. Um, like, like, respectfully you know not like talking no shit or anything but you know right. that, that's somewhere that i do feel but i would yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I personally i feel like i'm on that level but i do know that i would like to be there you know when i when i start knocking on, on doors and stuff i don't want to uh i don't want to show up half whatever for it you know like 
I'm, I'm in no rush, I guess, you know, I, I know I got time, you know, I, I turned 22 a month ago. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not on the tail end of anything trying to, trying to get there before, you know, before I'm done, you know, I, I got plenty of time to work. And uh, if I feel the need to get there sooner than, and I feel ready for it, then I will. And if I feel the need to take longer, then I'll take longer. You know, I, I got, uh, I got room to spare. And that's insane to me that you're already seven and oh, seven and oh in Bellator, right? All fights at 22 years old. It's, it's pretty impressive. Like so young. Yeah. I had my first one with them right after I turned 19. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just turned 19. And you didn't go to any other promotion or like you got, you started right at the top from your first pro fight at Bellator and you just won one and one, which is crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. For that. Yeah. We didn't, uh, we didn't really do too much discussing beforehand with anyone else or anything like that. It was, uh, it was straight, straight to Bellator. And um, my first one with them wasn't on contract. They wanted to make sure that I could be, they wanted to make sure I could be a professional adult at 19. They wanted to make sure I showed up on time and made weight and, and, and did all the, the right things. And um, after that, you know, I had won and uh, they immediately, you know, uh, signed me and I've been with them ever since. And, and currently, uh, you know, I've, I've never had any interest in going anywhere else and, and I don't right now either. You know, I, I, they treat me very well and uh, I, I appreciate everything they've done, done for me so far. And so I like sticking with them. You train at Next Generation, right? Yes. And how long, when did you get to start there and how have you improved as a fighter since you've been there? So, so I've always, uh, so how do I start this? So my dad founded that gym in 93, 63, early, early before me, before I was a person. Uh, and so I've been with, I've been training 10 and a half years, maybe started as a kid. Um, and I mean, I mean, it's been great. It's been great. I, I've recently begun outsourcing as far as training goes, you know, and finding new training partners and finding new guys to work with and, and new bodies, of course. But, um, you know, that's my, that's my home gym, you know, that that's where I grew up. And so while I will outsource other gyms and stuff like that, you know, that's, you know, homegrown, you know, I, I started here as, as a kid, um, with no intention of fighting, uh, but I kind of grew into it and, you know, wrestled in high school here in the same town and, and whatnot. So this is kind of my, my place and definitely, definitely grew uh, from this gym and this like community that we have, but you know, I've, I've also found good growth in getting to train with other guys. You know, my brother goes to little rock, Arkansas, uh, university. And so I go up there all the time to train with Bryce Mitchell and TJ Brown. I got guys here that come up and I get to train with. And then like just recently I, I was going up to glory and, uh, in Missouri with James Krause. Um, and that was a ton of fun. I'm definitely gonna be, uh, up there for a longer stay uh, before this next fight. And so, yeah, I mean, I love my gym, but I, I try to diversify as I can. And I think you look at a lot of fighters that are great. They do that, right? They go out out there and because you can only get so much knowledge from one place, right? Respectfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only you can only go so far staying in one place. And so while I while I still base myself out of that gym, I'm never never leaving that gym. Uh, it's it's good to outsource here and there, and, and definitely get new bodies. Like you know, you you train with the same guys all the time your training changes because you know each other so well and, and and whatever and like so getting to go to another gym and like I spent a whole day training with uh, James Gallagher and like he was a ton of fun and a guy that's fighting in the UFC this weekend uh, David Onama um, yeah. he's a ton there's good good guys uh, up there tons of them and um, so getting new bodies like that's always, always a good thing yeah absolutely uh, you spoke about your father right he obviously competed in the UFC in pride I got to be honest, is it almost like a cheat code to have a guy that's experienced like that sort of in your ear as you go along? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely helpful. You know, you, you, you have someone who objectively already went through all of it. You know, he went through like different, different organizations, but was also present in the sport when it wasn't quite as like perhaps professional as it is now. Like, like at the time you could fight, any day of the week you wanted to, there was no suspensions. There was no anything. Like I wanted to say he fought twice in one night and then drove somewhere and fought again, like two days later. Like you just, you could, you just, no one could stop you and nobody could like check if you had fought. Like, like it was very, it was very loose. And so he was around as that kind of blueprint for a professional sport was laid out. And so he's definitely got like a lot of insight and a lot of things to be able to tell me as far as coaching goes. And as far as like the business plan goes and everything, you know, like I, I don't have a manager. You know, I don't, I don't need one. 
uh, as of right now. You know, I don't, I don't have a uh, demanding need for it. You know, he has the connections already because he, he knew them then. So like, I, I, I already have those, those connections built and he doesn't want 20% of my purse to get me those connections. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a good relationship to have, you know, and uh, yeah. And I mean, as far as the actual technical aspect, you know, it's great. You know, he's, he's had his jujitsu black belt longer than I've been a person, you know? So like, it's, uh, there's definitely um, lots of knowledge there to uh, steal from. Yeah. You mentioned jujitsu there too, right? You have a variety of different submissions, right? Um, already. And so early at 22, like that to me is pretty scary. So <laughs> I got to ask you, man, like, are you getting like better? Like how much better are you getting? Like at what rate? And have we seen all your tools or have we just seen like a glimpse of what you could do? I mean, I, yeah, res respectfully, I think there's only been so much displayed, whereas like, but you've already, because you've already broken like two records. I mean, it's not like I'm talking about, you just had a couple submission wins and all that. Like you've already, in, you're pretty young. Like it's pretty insane, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Jiu Jitsu is definitely like, there's no, there's no secret um, that, that Jiu Jitsu is the, the game plan. And, and that's definitely my, my bread and butter more or less. And um, Damn I sure, yeah. definitely have things that I've been working on for a long time that have never outside of my gym really seen like the light of day, you know? And um but I'm in no, again, it's something kind of like, like I work a lot of striking. I work a ton, a ton of boxing, but it's something that doesn't, hasn't had the need to be displayed. You know, it's not something that um, needs to be shown off until it's present. I, I like, I earlier this year in January in Phoenix, I hit a choke on Ben Lugo that nobody knew what to call, Right. but it's something I've been doing for like two years and just hadn't done publicly but it was already a move from wrestling from from collegiate style wrestling that i turned into a choke and the guy that made it up for wrestling i worked with back and forth so like he was showing me wrestling stuff and i was showing him jiu-jitsu versions of the same thing and we're just kind of like crafting this this technique and i finally did it and then you get online i saw like six or seven different incorrect like names for it um, i saw all sorts of stuff it was kind of funny but i was like i told them right then what it was and still got like weird looks. So, dude, I've been working this for years. Like, I didn't just make this up in this two and a half minute fight. Like, it was, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I got, I got all sorts of uh, jiu jitsu stuff that I've, I've been working for a long time and just never, never had the need for it or never seen the opportunity present itself. You know, there's, while, while I love some of the fancy stuff, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with uh, just taking the back and choking them, you know, so. Absolutely. No need to get fancy, right? Whatever gets the job done. But that is, yeah. that's super impressive, man. Like just even the innovation and all that stuff, man. Kudos to you for that. Thank you. So I, I heard you fall Will Smith. But like, what was that like? Uh, he I'm was just fun. kidding. I'm joking, by the way. I, I'm no, I, know, I know. I know. Let me ask you a question, though. Going in that fight week, right? Or in the build yeah. up to that fight, how many jokes were there about that? There were so many. There was. <laughs> There were so many good ones, and my favorite is, uh, so so after the fight, I I TKO him, and um, I'm getting on the flight home the next morning. It's at like three a.m. But like every guy that fought that night and was like the media people from Bellator were all on this flight for whatever reason. And I'm hanging out, and I got headphones on, and this dude next to me kind of like nudges me and say, like, "Hey, man, it's like I work for the Bellator media people, and I made this highlight we were gonna post of the fight, but they said it was too disrespectful and we couldn't post it. But I want you to see it." And I was like, "Sweet!" And it's uh, me hitting him, and every time I hit him, it's uh, an entanglement with August, like whatever that song. Uh, it's Jada Smith, but every time I hit him, it goes. <laughs> Entanglement, an entanglement with August. It's just like it's like the whole song, and they they posted they posted the clip of the fight, and they said Will Smith got in an entanglement with Lucas Brennan, and immediately they deleted it. Like within three minutes, it was gone, and they reposted it with just like me winning. <laughs> but it was like I was like I saw it, like I saw you guys post that, and I think like they posted it, and then someone was probably like, hey, like this is just fucking stop. <laughs> but it was it was the the memes were were great. <laughs> That would have been funny, man. That's that's a good story. He was after Will Smith hit uh, Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of names, man, the name Skywalker. You probably have been asked this a bunch of times, but what are you? Are you a Star Wars fan? Huh. 
not not as big as it makes it seem uh i mean yeah like like i love the shit but like um the name came more from just like guys at the gym and shit when i was growing up as a kid and they would call me that all the time and then by the time i had my first amateur fight they're kind of running through like all the information and and, and whatever that they need because there's nothing on me at the time and they're like yeah you know first name last name whatever uh nickname and i was like shit but i had guys <laughs> like dude like you got it and i was like all right so i, I put it in there it's, it's just kind of stuck now uh but yeah it was just something that like i grew up with and so i, I just kept it yeah nothing uh, nothing too too nerdy uh but i do like this stuff <laughs> dude enough said bro enough said <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's funny because I was like fantasizing. I was like, hey, if I ever was ever like a fighter one day, which I'm obviously not, I was like, what would my name be? And I was like, it would, I would think, I would thought of like the Jedi. I was like, Marcos the Jedi Antello. But then I was like, oh, you know, the Skywalker thing is pretty cool too. But yeah, yeah the only two I know of it, there's me and then there's uh, Ryan, Ryan Bader, uh, Darth, Darth Bader. What, what? Darth, yeah, Darth Bader. I was All like, right, that's, that's a good that's one. A play there. <laughs> yeah. So um, back to the uh, fights here to just to wrap up here. What can the fans expect to see out of you the next time you're in the cage? I mean, uh, as I mean, I mean, a lot of the same, hopefully, I mean, re respectfully, you know, more, more high level, jiu more high level wrestling. And, and, you know, if, uh, if there needs to be a display of striking, there can be, but, you know, I, I plan on putting out high, high level grappling every time I fight and, um, and, and displaying that as best I can. And I, I aim to do it in a uh, less, Ben Askren ish style, you know, like all, all respect to him. He was successful for quite some time, but uh, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the lay and pray uh, style. You know, you know, if I'm, if I'm getting on top, I'm working and um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be sitting around anywhere too long. I just uh, want to get out and wrestle some guys, you know? Yeah. I think that'll make you more exciting to watch as well too. So nice. And what's that you got in the background there? It's interesting. <laughs> there are all records all records uh all the way over there and all the way over there i got a whole uh room set up of about almost 900 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so usually if i if when i do these sort of things i do it in here it's a, it's a cooler background so <laughs> looks really dope man yeah thank you <laughs> sorry man so thanks a lot for the time and uh best of luck to you in your next fight and in the future